the holiest day in the Muslim world, or for, for, for you as a with Muslim faith. Talk about that for a second. Well, Noel, thank you so much for having me with you uh, in front of this beautiful audience. Uh, I, I have to say how comfortable I am as a Muslim in front of an audience of social justice Christians mm. because I learned faith from you all. I learned faith from you all, mm. right? When I, uh, when, I was, uh, when I was 17, 18 years old, a college student, searching and empty and angry in so many ways, somebody whispered two words to me that changed my life. Dorothy Day. Dorothy Day. Right? And I got introduced to a way of being on earth that was connected to the cosmos. And I was so moved by that that I spent the entire summer after my second year in college traveling through Christian social justice houses from the open door community in Atlanta all the way up to Sojourners in D.C. And I, I went to Sojourners and I, uh, I said, I'd like to see Reverend Wallace because his work has moved me so much. And uh, 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 Reverend Wallace's uh, assistant said, you know, uh, Reverend Wallace, the only day he's here this month is today. And his schedule is so packed that there's, I can't even get you a minute. So I was like, you know, I've learned a thing or two from social justice Christians. And the thing I've learned is don't give up. So I found out where Jim Wallace lives and I went and sat in his porch until he came home. And, and I, had, I had my moment, right? So I, I learned what it meant to live mercy because Jim Wallace, Tony Campolo, Dorothy Day, Dietrich Bonhoeffer lived mercy. I ended up back in the tradition of my ancestors, with his, which is the tradition of Islam. But my tradition and your tradition, we share mercy. We share compassion. We share love. We share service. I mean, there's a story that Sufi Muslims tell about Jesus. Jesus was in the marketplace and in Jerusalem, and people around were insulting them, were insulting him. Jesus responded by blessing them. And when his disciples said, how can you bless people who insult you? Jesus said, I give only what I carry in my purse. Right? That is a Muslim story about God's loved one that we share, Christians and Muslims share. And, and that's why I feel such a bond with people who are doing the work that we are trying to do at the Interfaith Youth Corps, even if their inspiration is a little bit different. So thank you for having me with you here. Man, great to... Great to have you here, Ibu. <clears throat> Recently, just uh, about a week ago, I read an editorial that was in the USA Today that you wrote, and, and it was uh, an editorial that, that was urging people to engage in interfaith uh, dialogue and cooperation and service. Could you talk about that? Yeah, you know, um, let me tell you where that editorial came from. Yeah. It came from, f from hurt. You know, it came from, from fear. I mean, Muslims are afraid right now, mm. right? I mean, there's, there's somebody saying that he's going to burn Qurans, mm. right? I mean, our holy book, right? And there's, there's a great German Jewish writer who said two centuries ago, where they burn books, they will next burn people, mm. right? Mm. I mean, I was at Eid prayers this morning, the holiest day in the Muslim calendar. You know what the talk is at Eid prayers? It's like, it's like Easter, for, for Muslims. The talk is, are your kids okay at school, hmm. right? Because my kids are being bullied, right? My, my kid got pummeled on the playground because his name is Akbar, right? Is, hmm. is your husband okay? Because my husband's afraid to go to work hmm. because a cab driver in New York was asked if he was Muslim and when he said yes, he got stabbed, hmm. Hmm. right? Hmm. Is your wife okay? Because my wife is thinking about taking off her headscarf, which she wears as an article of her faith, the way somebody might wear a cross, mm. right? Because people harass her in grocery stores. So I'm scared. I mean, I'm scared for my kids, mm. right? I'm, my nephews in, in Texas, they tell me, you know, every day, Ibu, you know, I wish my name was Steve and mm. not Khalil. Mm. That's, you know, but 
uh, let me tell you, more than I am scared, I am grateful and I am hopeful, right? Mm -hmm. And it's so much because of what this community and other communities are doing, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, where would America and the world be mm -hmm. without Christians who said it is part of my faith yeah. to reach out to people from other backgrounds. I got a call from my friend Bob Roberts. You all know Bob Roberts? He's a pastor of uh, the Northwood Church outside of Dallas. And he said, you know, Ibu, this is the 25th anniversary of my church. We've planted 200 churches all over the world. We're a church planting group. We are mm. unabashedly evangelical. You know what I'm doing this Sunday, Ibu? I'm preaching peace between Christians and Muslims. I'm gonna tell my congregation of thousands that it is a Christian thing to reach out to their Muslim. This is what Jesus Christ, this is what WWJD, mm. right, that's what we gotta do, right? Wow. And it, you know, it makes me, it makes me think of, uh, it makes me think of, of a, an American Christian pastor who was, uh, who was based in Europe during World War II, during the Holocaust, and his community sent him money so that he could come home to the United States and celebrate Christmas with, with his home church. And he used that money to help a group of Jews flee to safety during the Holocaust. Wow. And, and one of his congregants wrote him an angry letter and said, why would you do this? And they weren't even Christian. And he wrote back three words, but I am. Mm. But I mm. am, right? Yeah. So I wanna, I'm gonna, I wanna thank I want to thank you yeah. for visiting me two weeks ago and yeah. saying, I'm praying for you, Ibu. I'm praying for your family. I'm praying for your community. I want to thank everybody here who is doing that. We need you to preach peace from those pulpits this Sunday, right? We need yeah. you to gather in prayer yeah. for, a, for, for a community of people that is afraid right now. Mm. Well, uh, Ibu, as you said that, uh, w when I travel to Arizona, I'm tempted to change my name to Noel Castellanos. Right. You know, because uh, really, uh, you know, there's so much in the world today that is about hatred. It's about hatred. John's been reminding us uh, uh, all week that the mark of the Christian is love. And, and the mark of, the, of, a, of a real Christian is to love our enemy or those who we, uh, the society would put up as being our enemies. And uh, I know that we don't have a lot of time, Ibu, and, and there's so much, I mean, this is a critical thing that you're here with us. And the, I mean, how graciously you accepted to come just says that I know you want to educate us. I know that you want to, you know, you want us to know, uh, you know, how we can work together, how we can be uh, uh, more knowledgeable about our human connection, okay? So right now uh, in New York City, there is controversy about this mosque, okay, that is being planned uh, to be built. And boy, that's a tough one for a lot of Americans, right? And so I just want to, you know, what's the response of love? What's the response of radical love as we think about this issue? So thank you for that question. So first of all, I, I, mean, I'm, I feel like I'm not here to educate you. I feel like I'm here to thank you for who you are and for what you've been doing for all these years. And John Perkins, you are an American hero and you, your name should be on the lips of every American. We should be grateful to you for this movement yeah. and this work that you have done for a half century. Thank you. Okay. Well, so let me, let me tell you a little bit about, about how I feel about this yeah. mosque and let, yeah. me, let me tell you a little bit about you know, just what I feel like people of goodwill and good faith might be doing right now. Yeah. So, you know, September 11, 2001 was one of the worst days of my life. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have so many friends in New York City, so many people that I love. I'm on the phone all morning, like you. Hey, are you okay? Are you okay? Are our people okay? Are people okay? Right? I mean, and I suffered that day. I mourned that day. I'm part of the us, right? And as yeah. soon as I could, I went to that site and I prayed the Muslim prayer for, for those who have, who have departed. We are for God and we return to God without doubt, right? And as, as soon as my son is old enough, I want to take him to that place. Mm -hmm. I want to tell him what happened in America. I want to tell him of his unique responsibility of an American as an American Muslim to rebuild, to restore, to build as King would call the beloved community. Mm. And it, mm. I got to tell you, it hurts me a little bit to think that I might be walking away from that site with my son and I might look at a location, an address and think, 
other people didn't want us to pray here because they thought that our prayer was the same prayer as the terrorists prayer and it's not it's not I pray for peace I pray for good faith I pray for people coming together and just because I happen to pray in Arabic doesn't mean I have one thing in common with the vile terrorists who attacked all of us we're part of the us we're part of the us yeah. well thank you Ibu as you can uh, see boy we, we, we could go on for a long long time but I want to encourage you to do something right now uh, Ibu has a book that he's written about his story and if you want to learn more about that they're selling it out in the back right now also on the screen you're going to get some information about Interfaith Youth Corps uh, what if one of our activities uh, as youth groups was to do an interfaith uh, project together a service project that would end in relationships we may not agree on our theology we don't agree on our theology right now you know uh, but we might realize that uh, there are Muslim brothers and sisters in, in this world that uh, we have a lot in common with and that uh, Jesus loves just like he loves us Amen. So let's give it up for Ibu right now, and thank you so much. Thank you. Can I say one more thing? Yeah. yeah. One last word from Ibu. I just uh, thank you so much. Alhamdulillah. Thank you. Thank, I, I, you know, I want to say we're in a special city. Yeah. We're in a special city. This is the city where the Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel came to see the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. preach from the Hebrew Bible, let justice rain down like waters and righteousness like a mighty stream in 1963. And Rabbi Heschel looked at King and, and thought about the Civil Rights Movement and said, the soul of Judaism is at stake in this movement. And when I heard that, I, I think to myself, the soul of my faith, of Islam, it's at stake yeah. in the flourishing and in the connectedness to every one of you. That's what my faith is about, right? I'm going to leave you with a, a final line from the 1893 Parliament of the World's Religions, which I believe we can make reality in our time, mm. right? From now on, the great religions of the world make war no longer on each other. We make war on the giant ills that afflict all of humankind. Mm. Jazakallah, may God give you goodness. Thank you for having me. Amen.